Why, hello everybody. It's Robbie from Southern California and this is the mid-June garden tour. I'm going to make a full circle and I'm starting from the very beginning of what I started this year in the driveway. I can't believe that we're still in spring, but summer is almost here. Look down the driveway. Look at this. From where I started here, there was nothing here going all the way down. That celery, it's all volunteer. It came up. I'm leaving it. I've been dragging it around. I've got plans of doing different things. Squash everywhere. That I'm not sure yet. Could be potatoes because I've got potatoes growing there. Can't go over everything. I otherwise will be here for hours, but there's pepper plants and there's tomatoes everywhere. Haven't planted anything in here. It's all ready to go. Look at my little makeshift um, trellis I made really quick with some tomato steaks. I think I'm going to do watermelon in there. We'll see. I'll decide this way. Look at the, how dirty my plant is. You know what that is? All here, straight up here is a pepper tree. And all day, those baby Cooper Hawks sit here and they watch me. They literally watch me. If I go to the truck bed, they fly down to the truck bed. They do make me a little nervous. And when I'm in the garden here on this part of the driveway, they come and sit and watch me. So they are fertilizing my plants. But look at this. This is probably, well, this is kabocha, and there's the kabochas. Now, we don't pick those until they're big, and then you bake those. Really good. They're like sweet potatoes. They're so good, but there's big ones in here, and it's loaded. It's absolutely loaded. I can't see them now, but they're all over, hiding underneath. Okay, so I've got this thing going. We'll see how this goes. I've got okra in there and Malabar spinach. This is that what was it? It's a shoe rack that my granddaughter texted me and said, do you want it? I'm throwing it out. And I said, yes. So we'll see how that goes. This is all new. Keep in mind, this is only a couple months old now. This is all new. This was nothing but a block wall with nothing growing. The totes have been brought in. These are all the small 18 gallon totes. They have been working fantastic if you see you know a lot of this you think well gee what's red in there it's just the pepper tree dropping the little peppers but look at that delicata they're everywhere here's that little tomato plant it's got tomatoes all over right now they're green we'll see what they turn into it looks like it's going to be a type of cherry tomato i didn't plant it it came up it was um in the in this rock mess it's just rocks came up and I put the tote next to it so it's getting food from the tote, you know, because I, I feed my plants also rotting leaves and water and it loves it. It's really big. We'll see. I mean, it's, it's struggling. You can see by the leaves it's struggling, but, you know, it's in rock. There's no soil there. This has uh, got a cement footing underneath, so it's really growing in nothing. But you know what? For growing in nothing, it's doing pretty good. So delicata, cucumbers, cucumbers are coming up everywhere. If you see the little yellow flowers, those are all cucumbers starting. So we'll see how that goes. Look at that, there's a little cucumber. This is tool. I have not done this before. I use tool for a lot of things and you know that, did a full video on it recently. I use it for tying up plants. I use it for covering to keep animals out. It's lasted for two years. You know, two years is really enough. It's finally starting to break down after two years, some of it in the garden. But now I'm using it as a trellis and it's working. Can you imagine a trellis? They send their tendrils in there and they've been holding on. Look at that. It, look, there's the cucumber. They're holding on to the tool and the tool is very strong. I would suggest use new tool if you're going to use it for a trellis because after a year in the garden, it starts to wear a little bit. So we'll see how that goes. I've got it trellised up here. I've got cucumbers coming up everywhere. And see, that's fantastic. I love it. Again, squash, we've gone through all the radishes. I think there's one or two left. And now I'm starting the new ones. And I am doing them, like I said, I'm starting the seeds so I know exactly what is going to grow. I'm not waiting for seeds to grow that aren't going to grow. I've gotten some seeds this year that won't sprout. So they were no good when I bought them. So you got to be careful on that. But when I sprout them first in my plastic bag method wrapped in cardboard, I know exactly what is going on. Peppers. I've got peppers everywhere. So peppers are doing really, really good. 
I've got peppers there. Look at this. I've got this pepper. Isn't that cool? And there was more peppers, so they're hidden because I've got them stashed underneath. I think we could walk over here real quick. Didn't want to make this that long, but I think it's under here. Look at that. I've got more there, and then there's more on the other side. There are the black beauties. And so we've got peppers. Let's keep walking. And then I make my totes work for me. So if you're planting in totes and containers, make it work for you. So if you've got holes on the side, put plants on the side. If you've got ground, and plant them next to it so they get the water that's coming out. With this one, I grew a, gee, we grew a ton of radishes in there. I keep replacing it with new seedlings, you know, the new seeds. As I sprout the seeds, I just push them in and I know exactly where they're going. There's no thinning, they grow perfect. But I've got this container down here and it's got too much in there. It's got celery, it's got a piece of tree collard, it's got tomatillos, it's just got too much. But I don't have to water it. When I water the toad on the top, it only has holes in the front there, and then it runs down and it waters that. So you make kind of like a cascading effect. Oh my gosh, I missed that. I've been trying to pick all the zucchini smaller. Yep, got to pick that today. The zucchini's growing faster than I can use. I've dropped some off at my parents' house or my brother and my parents. But it's fantastic. I've been making zucchini bread. I make, I put zucchini in everything. I even made spaghetti the other day. We eat gluten-free spaghetti. And that is so cool because I grated it up and I put it in the, in the spaghetti. It was so good. I use it for everything, even in rice, everything. The dogs love zucchini. Purple tree collard, it's getting big. Really want to get a lot of them in the ground, but I figured I would leave a couple here in pots. We'll see how it goes. Tomato plants, I'm growing so many tomato plants. And then this is dill, I just started in here until I figure out where I wanna put it. Really works good in there. Lettuce, a lot of times I just start the seeds in there and then move them. More squash, let's see what this is. Probably kabocha, and they just keep growing and growing. Celery in a bucket, use a bucket if you've got a bucket. And then the tomato plant is really getting too big. Look at this. Remember, I didn't plant this tomato plant. I was growing onions in here, and the onion, the starts that we got this year, obviously were old because they went to seed, but I still been getting a lot of onions. But the tomato came up on its own, probably from the compost, the kitchen scraps, and it, there must have been a tomato seed, and it said, this is perfect, and this plant is massive. So I am gonna continue to stake it up. It's full of tomatoes. I keep picking tomatoes. We had tomatoes yesterday for dinner, Plus we just snack on them as we walk by and it's just growing really big. There is a toad under there. I've got tomatillos growing in there. I don't even remember what else, but there's other things in there. And then of course, look at this, a little container from the dollar store. And I've got basil growing. I wanna take all the flowers off. I was gonna do it yesterday because I don't wanna lose my plant, but I wanna take it all off and I might make a pizza today. So this way I'm not wasting it. The way I make pizza, it won't matter if it's the flowers or if it's the leaves. It's really cool. Picked a lot of lettuce yesterday. I've got sage in here. I've got thyme in there. Look, a little tiny container sitting on top of an old bird cage I found just to keep it up so the rabbits won't get to it. And it's worked out fantastic. Orange mint. Kind of was gonna use that to put a stake in because I've got so much mint and it's heavy. That has actually been planted in our clay soil and I wanted the pot to be heavy. See, it's heavy. So I can put a stake in it and use that as a ground so I can put a stake anywhere I want. So I'm kind of using that for that. And then my carrots I started, yes, in the system I do. A couple weeds in there I'll have to pull out. But each seed placed in there by hand. So I, there's no thinning, no wasting seeds. And that's pretty much it. I haven't gotten this far yet, but I'm getting there going to plant up this chair. I'm going to plant up this chair. So I am little by little. I don't need to plant everything at one time because I don't want to just have stuff growing that I don't need yet. And plus, as you know, I collect a lot of stuff from the garden and this will be on the bottom of the totes. Look at this. Celery seed, Swiss chard, just whatever I collect. Kitchen scraps. Is it eggshells? And this will go on the bottom of the totes and then I can put whatever I want on the top uh, and then top it with a little potting soil or maybe from another tote, whatever I feel like. So we're done with this. Let's go now in the front yard. 
I've kind of spread myself thin, but I'm still going strong. Let's see, I haven't planted too many new things. We do have squash growing in here. I think I saw a squash, oh yeah. Obviously a hybrid, it's round, but that's okay. So I've got a type of zucchini, probably my own seed I saved. My daughter sent me home with a pumpkin. She, she, I should say she sent my husband home, Gary home with a pumpkin. So you've got a pumpkin growing there and red veined sorrel, that's a purple tree collar. Um, this is a broccoli, I believe. It might be a broccolini and we're almost done with the beets. We've almost picked, if I can get you in there, see the beets? So we're pretty much done with the beets to get a lot of that out and put something else in there. And let's see, celery is growing everywhere. The wind blows, the celery blows, and we end up with celery, which is good. Celery is really good. I topped this. This is a broccolini, but I topped it because I want it to grow back, and it was just full of just seeds. And I don't need a ton of seeds. We leave a lot for the birds. Blueberries, mint in a broken bucket. And then in here, I just started a zucchini. It should be pure. I bought the seeds. And see how I use floral pots? You can use flower pots to use it for steaks. See where my steaks are in? I don't know if you can see that. See, there, the steaks, the four steaks that I made this little tool cage in, that's worked fantastic last year and the year before. I don't have soil here. It looks like I do, but it's not, there's no real soil because this is a blacktop. It's a, like a parking driveway. So Gary put some wood chips down and it is breaking down, but you really don't have enough soil to grow anything here yet. So when I want to put a stake in, I just fill up these floral pots or flower pots and then I can put a stake in and it acts as if it's in the ground. And that, see here too, you can see this better. See, this is holding up this whole thing a big steak all last year, I think the year before too, and it's just stuck in one of the pots. So you could set pots up if you have a patio and use that, you know, put, to put steaks in if you're doing tomatoes and you want to trellis it up or just stake it up. Let's see, in here the squash is starting, so I've got squash in there. I'm not sure which, I think these might be hybrids, so we'll see. I haven't planted anything new and then just regular green sorrel. Walking onions, I've collected the babies and kind of put them in all these pots. I haven't done anything up here. Everything that's growing is just growing because it was here, but see the red veined sorrel came up in a flower pot, celery, that's the onions growing in there, and then I've got walking onions everywhere. They're walking everywhere, see? fact I didn't get that off so we didn't we lost that but we've got all the onions on the top and chamomile that's been reseeding itself which is really cool I clean that up put a little bit of potting soil in there so I can just keep taking the seeds and see I can just sprinkle it and that's how I ended up chamomile all over bought it once blueberries they're really starting to take off. They looked a little slow, so what I did was I took some pine needles and I soaked it, and I've been watering with them with the pine needles, so it looks like it's really worked. They're starting to do pretty good. We had a couple blueberries already, so they're doing really good. Let's see what else. That's basically it. This is the purple tree collar that the deer came in and ate to the ground. Look how beautiful. Now I've got two because they chomped in in half. So the other part took. It's right there. I've got to get the mint out. And then this, that's chocolate mint. And then the other part that was nothing there, just the stalk, grew back. So it grew really, really good. And that's it. These are just geraniums that we've got growing around here. This is cuttings from purple sprouting broccoli. So that worked out really good because now I can move them. They're just in a little flower pot, layered, sitting in another pot. This is walking onions, but now I can take those, if I can figure out where to put them, and I can move them. So I do a lot of that too. Just set up a pot and just stick a bunch of cuttings in. Okay, been trimming that and figuring out if I want to start over or leave the old plant, but it's so full of tomatoes on this chair. I love chairs. I've seen the rabbits come through here on camera and they're starting to pull on the old tool because it's starting to fall apart. We're, it's just so old already out in the direct sunlight all day and water and everything that I want to keep things away from the rabbits and the chair works really good. So the rabbits, they can't get up there. And that's why I really like, this is the old chair I, 
I think I bought this one. I can't remember. Some I bought and some I got for free. So I'm going to decide what I'm going to do here. But I've got different things growing in here. Just starting. These are some cuttings I threw in there last night. So they look terrible. Look at this. Stevia is growing in here. And then you got walking onions. I've got a little bit of dill starting. Some Swiss chard. I haven't planted anything new. But the tomato plant is doing really, really good. And geraniums everywhere there. But see, the tool is finally seeing its day. And the sticks are pulling on it. See, I put some sticks around to weight it down. So I think I'm going to replace this tool. If I take it down, I use the bricks to plant things in, then some of the rabbits and the ground squirrels have gotten a taste for onions, and they've been, they ate up my onions last time, my walking onions. But if I take it down and start over, I've got a new color, and put it in here, I think it's going to look really cool. And then, of course, remember with the bricks, it's hard to grow in bricks. And what I do is I put a pot inside that will fit in there. It could be anything, any food pot, anything you've got, you know, like a cottage cheese yogurt container, flower pot, whatever you've got that will fit in there. And then I pack it in there with soil. And it works really, really good because the bricks, like cardboard, draw water away from the plant. But by putting it in a plastic container, then they just last, I mean, these are in containers. That's why they look so good. There's a container inside, but it's kind of dropped down over the years. So if I put them in a plastic pot, they can grow their roots through the bottom of the pot and continue on, but they'll hold water with the flower pot. So I'll kind of see what I'm going to do here, depending on time. This one needs to be separated. This was a little tiny green sorrel, and look at this. It's just too, too thick. So you just pull that out, break it in half, cut it back and then plant it everywhere. I use that if I want something in greens and rice or different things or a green drink. So we'll see. But I think it's finally seen its day. But you know what? For $10 a bolt, 40 yards, and I used such a small amount and it lasted for years, that was a good deal. And I, I love it. So I probably will redo it. Okay. So now here, I had squash in here last year, and I planted a couple squash, but I don't even know what they are. They came up in the compost. So I think I might do tomatoes again in here. This one, see this big one in here? Let's see if I can step back, maybe you can see through better. I did not plant it, so th that's a volunteer. Some of these are volunteers, so I'm going to leave them. I mean, look at the volunteer. I planted this one. I believe I planted that one. And I planted another one back there. But look at the volunteer. Volunteers always do really, really well because a volunteer is a seed that was in there that decided this is the place it wants to be and it grows and they grow fantastic. And the tomatoes in here, I think you saw them last year. Uh, they, was even, they were even on the Nick Federoff show. He was eating tomatoes. They were all over here. I This makeshift trellis I made out of uh, zip ties and tomato steaks, it works so well. Just tied it up and the steaks are inside the totes. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to do the same thing. Freshened it up. I've got a little container there that I can compost right there in place. Drop stuff in there. Water it. Put a flower pot on top if I want. and It will continue to feed the soil. So I think I'm going to do that. Peppermint. Look at that. I haven't done a thing with it. And I probably won't. Good enough. Let's turn around and look at the ginger table. Ginger, turmeric, and stevia. I have got to share with you this week the ginger that's still in the house. I'll try to get that up in the next couple days. Can you grow ginger in the house? Watch the video. Unbelievable. What, two feet tall in the house and these are just starting? My ginger is just starting? Unbelievable how it is just starting to grow, the ginger, and in the house they're massive. But they're starting to come up now because their weather's starting to warm up. And the, of course, the turmeric's got the big leaves. This is black turmeric, which you can see by the leaves. They've got the black streak. And then, of course, the regular turmeric, the orange turmeric, it, they just look normal green, and they're all coming up. This I cut way back, and it's coming back really nice. I just chopped it, and it is coming up really good. That one was in the house. We brought some of them in the house, but we brought some of them out earlier. I was dragging them out really early in the year, and some of the ones I dragged out early in the year did better than the other ones. But all in all, I'm very happy with it. Like I said, the weather's warming up, and that's what these like. So I'm really happy with all this. Okay, let's go into the main yard. We're in the main yard. There's Gary's garden. And I don't think he's in there. 
but he was down there earlier. Okay, now we're in my main yard. It's like a jungle in here. Look at this. I've got squash everywhere. I don't even remember what I planted in there. I think there's spaghetti squash in here. I think there's kabocha, delicata. I should have. In hindsight, I should have only done zucchini because now it wants to run all over the place. So I put some tool up. I'm not sure if this is going to work because some of this stuff gets really heavy. But for now, I just put this trellis up. All just tomato steaks with zip ties. It's working really good and I put some tool on it. We'll see if I can get it off the ground a little bit, but it, it is like a jungle in here. I like it actually, like a jungle. Been slowly tr starting to plant some other stuff. Oh, there's broccoli. I will have to bring some for Kitty. And then that is oregano. I've got tomato plants back there that I put back there. This is the old dinosaur kale that's what, over five years old now? Isn't that amazing? But even though it looks really bad and the trunk is really getting bad and the leaves are small, let's back up for a minute. All this dinosaur kale you see, all of it growing through the yard, is basically off these plants. You just take a cutting, you plant it, you put it in some soil, don't have to baby it or do anything, and it just takes off and grows. So even though it's an old, sad looking plant, the cuttings are fantastic. They are just beautiful. Look at that. They are gorgeous. So you just take cuttings and you create new plants. Lemon verbena, there's that purple tree color that I got off of eBay and it's finally starting to take off. I'm a little concerned because I look at the trunk and the trunk on the bottom isn't growing. The top half is growing beautiful and that's growing right. But the bottom part is kind of hardened off if it doesn't get really big, I'm not that worried about it because once it gets a little taller, I'm going to top it. Just kind of clip the top off. And then once I clip the top off, it'll send a lot of side shoots and I'll get a lot of cuttings off of it. See, I don't know if it will live that way and survive or it will topple over. It will need a lot of support because it's not creating a big trunk like the dinosaur kale did. That one's not, and they usually do. And when you see it kind of top heavy, See that? And it's, if you can see it there, it's thicker on the bottom. And then as you get closer to the base, it's just not expanding like it should. So I'm keeping an eye on it. It's in a big tomato cage. I probably will stake it. But with the main thing I'm going to do off of that is get cuttings. I have a lot that I got from CPG, but because this one came off of eBay from somebody else's garden, then I have two different types to compare in case they're different. And so we'll see what happens with that as time goes on. And you know, I've got totes throughout the yard and cuttings everywhere. Let's swing around here. These totes are amazing. They're so old. I can't believe they're going really, really good. And they've been dragged around. Look how beautiful. Okay, I've got something eating it, but that's okay. We've got the birds in here all the time. I can take from the top where the birds haven't touched. Remember, my garden is not just for me. I bring in a lot of nature and wildlife in this part of the garden. Lemon verbena walking onions, garlic chives. Love my garlic chives. I want to get even more growing because it continues to grow all winter. So this is growing really good and the holes on these, as you can see there, are not on the bottom. So as summer comes, it will always have a little bit of water. So even if I don't want to water every day and I don't always, there'll be a little bit of reserved water for the plants because they'll send their roots to the bottom and they can find that water, and they will. There's the mushroom plant. I dragged this over here. Gary found it in the trash. I was going to do something with it. I might, I might tr use it as a trellis. I don't even know what it's from. I really don't know where it's from. All right, so let, oh, look. Looky, looky, looky. This is black tulle. I have never bought black tulle. It just came, and I love it. If you stand back, you can barely see it. Now, that is wrapped, and that's being used as a rope. So normally you wouldn't waste tool like a rope because you could use a rope or something else to tie this. But this is the dinosaur kale that kind of grew all over like that on the top. And it was all the way leaned down on the ground yesterday and it was like, do I want to cut it, take it out? So what I did was I just staked it and I used tool. And with tool, you're not going to damage the plant, see? If you use a rope, it will eventually cut in, but with tool, let me go up. With tool, see, it's very, 
generous to the plant. It gives it a lot of space. You can drag the tool down so it supports the whole plant there and the tool will last a year, if not longer. And it will hold the plant in the direction I want. And what I'm hoping for is as it's kind of propped up like that, it will start to grow straighter and maybe I'll get a better stake. I could have tied it to the stake, but it was going to snap because it didn't want to be bent. So I tied it with a bow, mind you, because I can untie it and tighten this up if I want. But now it's supporting it like it's in a netting. It's, it's a gentle support, so it won't break the plant. Yes, most of you are saying, just chop the blessed thing out. I could, but I like it. So I'm just going to leave it. And now with it out of the way, I can walk through here and I can check my Malabar spinach back there, my lemon verbena, uh, more lemon verbena. I've got two plants back here. I've got the dragon fruit back there. So I can now walk back there. That one's on the ground. I'll probably take that one out. It's kind of gone down and around, but I might cut it up and do cuttings out of that too. So see, now it's out of the way. And that's what I really like tool for. Tool's got so much for me. This one I'll probably start taking out. There's, it's really skimpy. And I would like to be able to get into that tote. What is that tote? Five years old also. And that tote is growing the purple sprouting broccoli. Look at that. Turned into a massive plant. I really want to take it. I didn't even get the seed head off from last year. But the thing is, the birds love it. They hang out all day in it. So I'm not sure yet. I think when I get to this part and I really decide what I want to do, that's the time I can do it. I don't have to worry about it now. Another way to grow seeds, lazy. Look at that. You just squish a tomato like I've done. Just squish them in there and push them in there and they grow. And then you can take them out. And that's what I've been doing. Just taking the little tomatoes out and just putting them in different places. Okay, mint. You got the strawberry, the dreaded strawberry mint. Smells good, tastes bad. You got strawberry mint back there. I just have it because it smells good. I don't drink that. Orange mint is okay. I cook with orange mint, but I use, for tea, I use peppermint, chocolate mint, and what's the other one? Spearmint. And that's what I use for tea. And then I can add in stevia with that or lemon verbena if I'm using spearmint. See that one plant that's breaking apart? That's going to have to go. I see it broke. That is, that is the same plant. That's the purple tree collar that's wound all through the garden. That tall thing that's going up there, and it's really hard to see. It's really early in the morning. It's still dark. That tall thing right there. See that? That's the purple sprouting broccoli. And it only grows broccoli like once a year. It gets a head of, on the top. So it's kind of like, I don't know how much I really want to grow. Gary took some of mine in, from my yard and he planted it in his. And they transplanted it quite, quite well. But the leaves are good. But that's why when I get in here, I can decide. No reason to just pull things out until I get in here and say, hey, I want to grow this and that. It looks like a jungle. But I'm telling you, we've got, and I'm standing here and the birds are flying all through the trees. We have hundreds and hundreds of birds, not just hummingbirds. Birds I have never seen before. Birds that Gary has never seen before. We didn't even have those little house uh, finches, the, uh, what do you call them? The English sparrows, the little house sparrow. They're coming in now. Isn't that amazing? We didn't even have those little simple things. I know they're all over the UK, but we didn't have them here. And they've been coming in, but we've got all kinds, Western tanagers and, and all different orioles. And, and of course the scrub jays and mockingbirds and gross beaks. There's so many birds. The bluebirds come in here. They like it because they've got water. It does look like a jungle. It's got a lot of cover for them. And that's important to them. And I enjoy that. So I can sit here in the garden and watch all the birds come in. They love their waters. You know I love my solar fountains. And they're the ones that are taking care of all my insects. I don't have to spray anything. They're doing everything. We even have deer. See that hillside? Part of that hillside is ours up there. And the deer have been coming in. They're kind of regulars now. So I actually sat one morning. I got out here early in the morning and I sat with the deer. That was exciting. My friend told me I'm going to get myself killed. Well, I don't know. Uh, I'll talk about that another time. Maybe I'll do a nature walk. But I sat with all the deer and it was really fascinating. These are the pansies I bought in the beginning of the year before I was on lockdown. And then I got some geraniums. They were really pretty. and I got them for a deal. They looked really bad, but I wanted that color. And I've been breaking them up and putting them everywhere. So I've got geraniums, red geraniums there, and I've got red geraniums there. 
And this is another one I bought a couple, I think a year or two ago from CPG. I've been breaking that up and planting them everywhere. They look so pretty. I know a lot of you have said, why aren't you talking about your geraniums? Well, they grow like weeds here. See the pink ones in the back going past that bucket? It hasn't turned on yet because there's no sun. That's a water fountain up there. There's a water fountain. That's the one I made out of cement. And yes, I will get that video up soon. Um, they grow like wheat, so a lot of people don't really think about their geraniums. And you're right, I should, because the hummingbirds, for some reason, still like them. They pick around, they must find insects and pollen or something off of it. And the birds love it to hide in. And you just break them off and stick them anywhere you want, and you can get them growing. So everything's doing really, really good, and I'm really excited. There's walking onions, and I have been working a little bit in here. I've got an eggplant, eggplant in there, tomato plant there. I think that's a tree colored. That's going to get too big. But for now, it's in there with geraniums. Got more geraniums back there with the fancy leaves. And look how beautiful this thing is. What is that? Silk flowers. Don't tell anybody. I've got silk flowers. This is, this is a solar panel holder on a stake. That's, that is a piece of branch. And I got, look at that zip tie. <laughs> silk flowers but when you step back look how pretty I think I'm going to be changing all of those out I was making the cottage cheese and yogurt containers and putting my cords in there but I, I think if you compare them there's no comparison they really look good that way I mean I've got that one that I put up a while ago and that is just uh, tape masking tape that I use the green masking tape on that one if you can see that there it's okay but when you put on a couple of plants like that and then you stick them in the plants I think it looks really cool it just looks nice and then the fountains of course and my frog like I said a lot of the solars are just starting to go on it's we still don't have sunlight yet mint this is the spearmint all over the ground I'm letting spearmint grow in certain areas as long as I'm not walking through it see I'm okay. I just want to make sure if there's, let's say, a rattlesnake. I haven't seen one in my garden yet, but let's say there is. I want to be able to see him before he sees me. So that's pretty much it on that. Oh, let's swing around for one minute. It's a mess, but look. Kitty's garden is overgrown. I haven't done anything, but what's important to me is this, and that is lettuce seed. So I've got to get that out and probably clean up her garden and get serious with it. But that's her garden, and of course the holes are there, and it waters that, and that's just a bunch of cuttings see and I can use one pot just for that and I don't have to bother with it here's a little piece of geranium I can just stick them in there and then anytime I decide I want to start a new plant I can just come over here and grab the cuttings that grew okay let's swing you around so you can designate in your yard your patio whatever a flower pot with some good soil in it and just do cuttings as you go along you know like I've been taking out the collard I don't need any collard a lot of this collard came up from seed. They're volunteers on their own. But if I wanted to do, let's say I like this shape and I like this piece here, I could just cut it, trim that off, and start a whole new collard plant from that one piece. So if you've got a pot already designated, you don't have to think about it. You'll have a pot there and just stick it in. You can have 10, 20 cuttings in there and just move it out when you're ready. Let's see, so in here, I finally got to this, trimmed it way, way back, so now I can see my fountain back there. But I left the collard, it's kind of a cross between a collard and probably the blue kale, dazzling blue kale, because of the leaf shape. I'm not sure, it could be a cross between sprouting broccoli and collard, but it's got a different shape, tastes good, it's still good greens. That tomato back there is old. This one I just planted, and this one my daughter gave me. I don't know what it is. She bought it, said plant it. I put a pink clothespin up there, so I'll remember. And she called it Goliath, so we'll see what happens. That's in a pot, but the pot is buried. So the tomato plant can let its roots go into the soil here. So we'll see what happens with that. And then here, I forgot that I had some in a pot sprouting broccoli. I don't know if you can see it. I covered it to protect it. See, it's right, it's right in there. A little piece that was in a pot, and I thought, oh, I've got three or four pieces from my original plant. So I stuck it in there and covered it because I don't want anything to get to it. So we'll see what happens with that. And there's that geranium. Oh, look, I've got white leaves. There's a term for that. And on the top. I wonder if I got this one from my friend. He grows geraniums in his yard, and 
half his plant is white. Real white. And I see I've got a piece up there. And I don't remember the term offhand when it doesn't get the green in the leaf. But you can't cut them off, he said, because it doesn't develop enough food for it to live. That's what he was telling me. I don't know if that's true or not. But I did not see that the other day. But there's a piece there. I don't know if I can get close enough to see it. And here's another one there. I call them white, but see there, look at that. There's no green color to it. The stem is even lighter. This must be off of his, because I took a, there's more here. See, I didn't see this the other day. They're coming in white and pink, the leaves. Wow, I have to tell him that. There's more back there that's even whiter, even whiter. Yeah, he told me you can't cut off the piece that's just white because the plant can't survive. So you have to have part of the plant that's green and then you can do a, a cutting and then you'll have a plant that grows the white leaves and the green leaves. But I did not see that. I just found that with you. And yet I was cleaning back here and I just noticed it now. So he was telling me about his white one last night. So obviously it might be off of his. I see more white back there. Cool. Have not gotten to this yet. Um, but I will get to it. Still not sure if I'm going to put a tomato plant. I've been cutting all the seeds off. Not too many. Let's like here. These are great to compost. You know, like an egg has a lot of nutrition. Well, so does this. So I put this in my compost totes. And I leave a lot, of course, for the birds because the goldfinches come in. Look at this. Dazzling blue kale going to the sky. I love leaving the garden like a jungle. And we'll talk about that when I get to the end. Of course, I say that a lot and then I forget. But I'll talk about that as we go. All right, let's look over here. Been picking pepinos. Gary thought, because it was still white, that I should just chop it up and stir fry it with his eggplant that he liked. But when I cut it, it was sweet like sugar. So he ended up eating it. And he's going to take some cuttings off of mine. Because remember, each plant's an individual. So one plant might grow better than another. And it's starting to flower. Cool. So I really got to get some cuttings off of it too. Tomato plants, the stuff on the wall is doing really good. My lemon balm, my transplanted is doing really good. Walking onions everywhere. Sweet potatoes I was going to pull out, but I may end up transplanting it. Because you can eat the leaves too. The tomatoes, it's just everywhere is doing really, really well. As soon as they turn red, we get them off. So we get them before anybody else gets them. Yeah, I've seen squirrels come and they'll grab the red tomatoes and run off with them like they've got the biggest treasure in the world. Like, ooh, look what I've got. And they'll run. I've seen them on camera. It's so funny. Okay, so this is celery. And yes, celery seed is very expensive. And yet I've been... I can't get that off. It still has pollen, so it hasn't developed the seed yet. I've been composting a lot of that. A lot of those totes you saw in the driveway, I was cutting a lot of this and putting it in there. So it's like the greatest plant food in the world. So you just put it in your tote, especially when you're setting up a new tote. All the seed heads. Oh, the goldfinches are all over here. They're screaming now. They want me to leave. I haven't done anything in here, but some of this stuff, let me step in here for a minute because I can get in here. A lot of these are volunteers. They came up from the bottom. So they're growing on their own and they went to seed. So I'm going to cut the seed heads back. They're a type of you know, brassica and I'll see because I think they're hybrids. I'll see what they look like and I'll decide if I want to keep them or if I want to put tomatoes in there or since I do a lot of layering, it's noisy. Oh, it's a plane really low. No, it's not. It's a helicopter. Private helicopter. Okay, he's passed. All right, that was really low. Anyways, um, I'll cut the seed heads off and I'll decide what I'm going to do. And then like I layer a lot of stuff, I can put a tomato plant in a large flower pot right in these containers I've got. Whatever way I want to do it, fountains everywhere. They're just starting to turn on. Just starting to turn on because the sun is just coming up now. That's algae. I wash it off by hand. I've gone out here with a Brillo, you know, wire brush and scrub, and it comes right back. It's fine. Look at when you go to a lakes and stuff. There's natural algae, so I don't worry about it, but you can clean it off. Still have to plant in here. I've got a container in there. I had an old bucket. It's cracked. Just an old bucket, so I loaded that up. I might put a squash in here or eggplant. Not sure. Look at all the baby red vein sorrel. But I layer a lot. Again, it's easier for me to water that way in Southern California. 
All I have to do is water the pots and it will seep into everything else and water everything else in there and the pots retain a little more water than it would be if it was in the ground. You know, I've talked about this a million times. That you could have a plant growing in the ground and water it and you don't know if it's going to go straight down to the roots or take off and leave somewhere else. A lot of people tell me they watered and watered and their plant died, but when they go and dig it up, it's like the soil all around it was dry. It depends on which direction the water was running, like creates an underground river, and if it's not going to the plant, and the plant didn't send its roots out looking for it, well, then it's not going to get any water. So I like my totes and containers. Sweet potatoes, look at the walking onions. This is what it looks like before they pop the baby, see? They travel on up. And then on the top, the babies pop out, and then you just plant those. Isn't that cool? Yes, I haven't really gotten to this. I was going to pull them out. I'll probably get to it and then decide what I'm going to do. I might leave the sweet potatoes, freshen it up, throw some more leaves and stuff in there, and go from there. Oh, this is the green beans. I had green beans everywhere until something chomped the bottom, but I've got seeds, so I'm going to plant that. Haven't gotten to anything there. There's all those from CPG over there. Still trying to get those purple tree collards in the ground. Gary said he was going to and well he's been busy with his stuff and I've been busy with mine and he ended up buying way too many. But it's okay. My daughter's got a bunch and I am going to get them in the ground. Mint and then of course here I am still working but I am getting actively setting up things in here. I've got new eggplant growing with my old plant that I cut back. That was the one that gives the big, big eggplants. So I cut that way back and look how beautiful it is. It's got flowers already and hopefully we'll get eggplants off of that and then see how I can individually grow them in containers and I put those baskets. You've seen the video, I hope. I take these baskets from the dollar store and I cut the tops off, see? When you cut the top of the basket off, they'll fit over flower pots. And then they'll really protect the plant until the plant gets some size. So it works out really good. So I've got some eggplant in there. This I'm setting up. See how I load it with leaves? You save on soil that way. So if you're going to buy potting soil, and there's nothing wrong with buying potting soil, you, you save on it that way because the whole bottom is leaves and maybe some handfuls of native soil or whatever you've got. Your kitchen scraps shredded paper and then the top has the potting soil but the worms come to it they absolutely love it this is an old tote I found in the trash it's cracked I pushed it up against there it's gonna go fine for another year or two and I'm gonna grow something in there I think I'm gonna put a zucchini in there zucchini is very big to me because I use it for everything see I can walk back here look at that and we are going to have purple tree colored this is a green tree colored that ended up falling on its side and growing all these tree collards. I'm hoping you can see the trunk. See the trunk back there? It winds around. So what it did was when it laid down, it grew a bunch up. So that's why I've got all those. It looks like I have a field of tree collard, but what it is is they're all growing off the trunk. So being that it grew that way, I'm going to leave it. Isn't it nice and clean when you just put your, your solar panels out like this and it's just taped on? Isn't that cool? And then you don't have the box. I, here I was doing these things out of refrigerators. No, this was out of a dishwasher. Gary picks up dishwashers and I would take the baskets and wire them up. And to me, it's like, why did I do all that work when all I had to do was use masking tape? I don't know. It's like one day I was just sitting there going, why didn't I just do that? See, and now I have a fountain here. I just love my solar fountains. You can put them anywhere. You don't need electricity and the birds use them all day. And it, even on cloudy days, they get a little burp, so it's still moving a little, and it's just fantastic. Oh, I've scrubbed that thing so many times, and the algae keeps growing back. But you know what? The birds love it, and they take a bath. Same thing there, the candlestick, I can scrub that one out, and the birds love that too. I've got them everywhere, because the solar fountain, I don't need electricity. All right, now, let's get back to there. I've got a lemon verbena back there, so I want to get a purple tree colored in there. One or two, and I wanted this time, we'll see, stake it up so it grows in the direction in which I want it to grow. Not let it fall over. I didn't realize that is a tree colored. How big they get and how fast. What is that, two years old now? They grow so fast and that one now is in the ground. So is that one, even though you see the pot, it's left the pot, it's in the ground. So that is doing really good, but that one is massive. And I have done a ton of cuttings off of that. I've sent some to my friends. Uh, they just, it just grows and grows and grows and 
I really do need to get a bunch of leaves off and make a bunch of green powder. So I have green powder for the winter. And I keep saying I'm going to do it, but I have to do it. I've done it before, so I will have to do it. Just grab the leaves off, wash them, dehydrate them, crush them, blend them, and store them. See, the birds love my Moringa tree. Isn't that beautiful? We're going to cut that tree back a little bit. It's struggling probably because we had a cool winter, but it's, it's coming back pretty good. I mean, we've got pods starting and flowers growing, so it's doing really good. Let's see. So I think I'm done here. I can keep going. So I am getting things done. Another eggplant. I planted that a little while ago, but now it's starting to take off. Probably gets a lot of shade, but oh well. It broke this piece. I have tried everything besides cutting it off. It sits on the ground, but it won't set root. So if I cut it, it's going to die. If I cut it and drop it in the ground, it will probably grow, but it will lose all its leaves. I've tried cutting the bottom to encourage it, you know, slicing the bottom to grow, and instead it grew a shoot instead of growing, growing roots. So we'll see when I'm going to decide. Maybe I should just put a purple tree collard next to it. And then when the purple tree collard grows, get rid of the strawberry tower I'm not using back there, then I can just take it out. See how it grew? It just, it got so top heavy. You really have to control these things. But look at it, that's all food. And if you're just gonna eat it like collard, I think it tastes better than regular collard. Cause this is regular collard here. This is one plant that snaked all over and I have been cutting it back a little bit all the time, more and more. Um, Cause I wanna be able to use this area once I get to it. But the thing is, it's strong. Collard is strong, and I have found tree collard to be more mild. Even my daughter likes it, and she's very particular, so that's good. Let's see, what else is going on here? Papaya. So we lost the top on that one. Gary's going to top it a little bit better. That one's been giving him papayas, I believe, because he's been eating strawberry papayas. It might be from his, let me step over here, from his too. So we'll see what we're going to do with this. I guess we're going to leave it. Remember, this is growing in a tote. But if you see the bottom, it's split and it's, they have sent their roots into the ground. So it's growing really good. They're happy. They get all the water. You drop a hose in there. You fill it up. It goes straight to the roots. They get the water no matter what. And they just get massive. Unbelievable. I hear the hawks screaming and screaming. We'll get over there. We'll talk about the hawks. So that's what's going on here. Nothing new. I think I'm going to move a lot of those strawberries out of that tower if I can get to it. It's like I've got all these gardens now to run around. been topping this and using this for compost because I don't want to collect any seed from it. So I've been throwing it back there. I'm trying not to shake you around too much. So I'm setting up a tote here, which is really in the shade. I'll have to figure out what I want to plant there. But there's only going to be a couple holes on that end. I'm hoping you can see that. I'm going to put some holes there once I set it up. And it's going to water this moringa. So what I'm doing is I can drop a hose in there or just water in there. And whatever water gets to the bottom will come out and it will water this moringa. And this way, the totes are working for me because the moringa is in the ground. And it will get the water from the totes. And then any leaves that are breaking down, it's going to have constant plant food feeding the moringa. So this moringa should do really good. And look at the tomatoes. Aren't they gorgeous in this little tote? These were the ones that were in the house and then we dragged them out and I just dragged it out here and started watering it and it's, it's getting really, really big and it's growing a ton of tomatoes and I keep pulling tomatoes off of it. So we're at the end here. Let me turn around real quick. I'll peek in here for a minute. Don't look at me. I'm dressed in yard clothes. <laughs> There's the ginger. That's what I wanted to show you. I've, I've got to get a whole video on that. They're massive. I didn't even get them out. And the ones that were growing in the house, house plants, keep that in mind. I don't know what else Gary's got going on here. We'll deal with this in the winter, but I just wanted to share that real quick on the garden tour that yes, you can grow ginger in the house as house plants so you can reap the benefits of having a beautiful plant as well as having food. Now, real quick, I did not forget. I like this part of the yard. This is my yard. Well, Gary can come in it too. No, it's, it, I like to keep the, this part of the yard like a jungle. The birds really enjoy it. They've got all the water features. And on top of that, by letting the things get overgrown like this, and most people would say, no, no, you take them out and plant new plants. Here in Southern California, 
I have food growing in this yard all year, all through the winter, all through the fall, all through everything. I have food all year, there are trees. I wanna make a stir fry, I wanna make a green drink. I wanna just make rice and steam some greens in my rice. I have all kinds of food all year. So I'm not just growing desperately in the spring and summer to get food. I have food all year. Even the celery that went to seed, you chop that back and that regrows. I have all kinds of greens for the, for the year. And then I've got tomatoes growing. When you let them just keep going, we've had tomatoes all winter long. So that's why I like keeping it like this. And the birds come in, which they're coming in right now. They eat the insects. Yes, I put seed out. But the seed eaters, let's go through the gate and I'll talk. The seed eaters are the ones that signal to the insect eaters it's safe. It is absolutely safe. You can come in here. We're eating. We're drinking. So then the insect eaters come in. And some of them are both. They eat insects. They eat seeds. They eat everything. But they all know it's safe because they see everybody else. If you hear the screaming, that's the baby hawks, which are now big. They're probably going to drive me crazy, so we won't go into that. But that's why I feed the birds. Right, see? Those are the babies. They're just flying around, they're exercising, they're doing their thing, and they make me very nervous too many times. Here's the Moringa. I'm putting a tote here, another Moringa. It did terrible last year. It looked like a stick and it never grew leaves. So I've been watering it. It still has the cup. Moringa doesn't like to be transplanted sometimes. So if you're growing Moringa in pots and then you put them outside and they die, I put that in a cottage cheese container. And then when I planted it, how many years ago now? The pot's still there. I could break it out. It doesn't matter. It sent its roots into the ground and it never went into shock. They don't even know they've been transplanted. They just keep growing. You'll see the other papayas, what they do. So this year I am going to cater to it. So I'm putting a tote there. Same thing. See how I set it up? There's going to be a hole right there. So when I water whatever I decide to put in there, it could be tomatoes, cucumbers, okra, it doesn't matter. It's going to run out and it's going to fill in here whatever leaches out that beautiful tea that beautiful fertilizer and it will be feeding this moringa so it should do really really well so i'm kind of thinking about everything i do because i want it to work for me i want everything to be easier because if it becomes a big chore and you know i'm getting older so i don't want to do more work i want to do less even though i keep taking on more gardens but at least the gardens work for themselves look at this Gary said, does, does Deborah, my daughter, does she like papaya? I messaged her and she said, yes. So he'll be dropping off papaya. You think that's a lot? The house is full. He's been processing it, cutting it up, freezing it. The dogs absolutely love papaya. The tool has worked amazing. By just wrapping a little bit of old tool, it has stopped them from going up there. Could be rats, tree squirrels, who knows. But they've been going up there eating the papayas even when they were green. Well now, here's more tool here. I really gotta get serious and put better tool. Here's the papayas, and they're all right up there. You saw that. But they don't wanna cross the tool. So it has worked out good. So if you have a problem, definitely try tool. I haven't planted anything in the totes. We just keep throwing things in there. But again, we water the totes because they feed. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Look at this. See, I should just wrap the whole thing with tool. I did not see this. So something has tried to get up here, but when it came to here, it wouldn't continue on up. So I didn't see that. So what I think I will do is I got that black tool. It'll look really cool. I'm going to wrap that. And this will heal. This is no big deal, but it's sticky. This will definitely, see, you learned with me. I learned a lot when I do these garden tours. I learned for myself too. Yeah, and see, they damaged this one a while back, but they stopped. Yeah, this one fell out, wasn't propped. It got too big. We'll probably end up replacing some of these trees at some point. But that one, something probably got angry. It could not get up. And it started to gnaw a little bit. Maybe it was thinking of taking the tree down and then it would be able to get all at once. But if I wrap some tool around it, just slightly wrap, it's cheap. It's going to cost me pennies. That will save that. I will definitely do that today. So this one wasn't staked, but it did well. But again, in pots and they're leaving the pots. 
And then don't forget, like I was saying, they're heavy feeders. So here I have totes not, I didn't even plant anything in it last year. I think that one had a tomato. But the main thing is to continue to throw leaves in there and hit it with water. And that makes a compost tea. And then the holes are on that end. And then they water in the ground. And then these all reap the benefits because they do need leaf matter. Not so much fertilizer from animals, but just leaf matter and their own leaves work really good. But I throw collard leaves and other things in there too. Look at that. Pomegranates from the... Yeah, do not come down on me. Uh, the pomegranates, they're doing really good. That's the tree I planted from a seedling. I've got a couple of them all over the yard. That's really cool. We're gonna plant some more now. And then again, more papaya. See how big the papaya is? More little ones on the top. And again, totes. This one even broke the pot, but the roots are in the ground, so we're okay. And I've got to get that somewhere. It's just citrus trees that came up from seed almost two years ago, and they're still growing in the same pot. Unbelievable. Because there's no holes on the bottom. So their roots cannot leave the ground. The holes are further up, and I just don't know where I even want to put them. I don't know what it's going to taste like because they're from seeds. Another papaya, and then again, a big tote here. Same thing. We just keep throwing leaves in. We water the tote, and they feed the papayas. And then rosemary back there, so everything is doing really good. Let's walk over to the wall. I think we're almost done. These things are making me nervous. These are the baby hawks that are flying around my head. And when I go to the truck bed to work, then they fly around my head and then they come down on the truck bed. They're so used to seeing me that I'm, I'm their entertainment. And that's what they're doing. They're flying around my head. I can't wait to set this up, and I'll talk about that when I get there. I have ideas, but not complete yet, so I just love that. And then I've got that from last year. Gary built that just out of PVC, just popped it together, one, two, three, hung it up, and he put the rebar up there. See, he's really into his rebar. And then he had some wire, and it's going to be a great, great trellis, so we'll get to it. I did not plant that squash, so I don't know what it is, and it's probably going out because I'm going to line this with totes. I've left the south thistle because the goldfinches feed on that and they've had babies and they need food. So I figured it was important to leave that. This is the moringa. We cut it back. A little yellow. But once I get totes in here, oh, they're so annoying. <laughs> um, once I get totes in here, it will reap benefits out of the tote because the totes will be loaded with leaves and stuff. And as I water the totes and grow in there, it will feed the moringa so it will help. We've been eating a ton of this. Gary wants to get cuttings off of this. My brother wants this. This eggplant came up from seed last year and you eat the skin and all. When you fry this up, you just slice it up with onions and fry it on the, you know, in a frying pan and Gary loves it. They're small, you wanna get them before they turn yellow because they're bitter, you don't eat them when they're yellow. So I gotta get that off. All the yellow ones I wanna take off. But the purple ones, they are so good if you like eggplant. Like I said, it's so simple. Just wash them, slice them, slice them up with an onion, a little oil or butter, fry it up on the top of the stove top, and he loves it. Did not get to this. This is last year's plant. This is the only one I haven't gotten to. I am going to still pull it out. It's not going to really grow anything. It's a year old plant. But these are starting to grow. It's got a geranium in the front for looks. They're taking off. They've got squash all through them. I've been picking, eating, using these squash. Look at that. And I am starting to put some things around where the holes are. I'm going to try to get some. I took some old squash. See, it's just droopy because it was coming up in places I didn't want it and just pulled it out. But I think I'm going to put some squash in the ground and see if it will make it here or not. Here, look at that. Aren't they beautiful? The flowers are gorgeous. This looks like a zucchini. Oh, good. I really prefer zucchini. And then I just planted in there. So we'll see what happens in here. I like putting a little ring around it keeps roly-polies from getting to it when they're little and it just protects it a little bit so there's my dipper the dippers I make let me see you've seen them I've got a whole video on this somebody asked me when I had the dippers I got from Daiso which is a Japanese store where do you get them and it was a good question so I looked all over the internet and there isn't anything you couldn't find them and I don't know why Daiso had them and so I decided to just make my own, and I actually like the ones I make better. If you want to see that, I've got a whole video on how easy it is to make it. More squash and a tomato plant. And that's basically it. 
The bathtub has created a wildlife refuge here. That has been unbelievable. That bathtub, the solar hasn't gone on yet, I don't think, because the sun's not there yet. It's just starting to come out, but it's still well in the shade. The hawks have been coming down, teaching their babies to drink out of that. I did hear that they're also drinking out of my neighbor's swimming pool. But they come down and take a bath in the bathtub, the hawks. We saw a coyote come through here one day to go get some water. The deer have been coming through. So the deer have designated that as their water trough. So they've been coming, they've been regulars. We see them quite often now. And that has just turned into something amazing. So Gary is, as you can see the bricks there, he is building another pond next to it that's gonna be closer to the ground to bring in, well, he wants frogs. He wants to bring in other animals because that's lifted up. So birds go in there. Um, but he wants to bring in other things. So he's building something. I didn't even ask him exactly what. We'll see when it's done. And I'm going to get a lot of pomegranate trees around there. The, I've got so many pomegranate trees growing that if I've got one there and there's one on the other side, if they bush out, they'll give good shelter for all spring, summer, and fall. And then when they lose their leaves, I can get in there and trim it back the way I want. Like here's a pomegranate tree I planted. You'd be able to control it the way you want and look at the shelter it gives you know for the spring and, and stuff because there's more birds flying around all through spring and summer because all the babies are trying to figure out where they're going to live and what's going on so it, that will look really cool plus I can get some other plants around there as it goes on and then here's the truck bed things are going good I have yellow squash and I labeled it which I should do all the time look at that yellow squash I can take this leaf off cool and you want to keep those small so I might bring those in today I love yellow squash sliced up a little butter on top of the stove in a frying pan so good and then here we've got other squash growing so we just started with the truck bed we've got some Korean melons straight seeds I didn't even start them I just stuck them in here and they came up in a clump so We'll see what happens. I've pulled a few out and moved them around. I think there was more. Something ate a leaf off of that one. So as, if I get a few vines from that, that will be good. And all the other ones you're seeing here are Swiss chard. This is Swiss chard. Just left over in the soil because even though Gary freshened it up and did whatever he did to it, it it's just that the seeds were there so they were growing. And then I can keep something right here. And I can just go through and water the seedlings anytime I want without turning on the hose if I didn't want to. And I could use a dipper for this too. So I kind of keep water here. And that's basically it. We're done with the garden tour. The trees are still doing good. That's the apple tree. The deer haven't chewed on that. Even though I have seen them browsing around and eating, they haven't chewed on that. And then I've got another one. I, again, we leave the south thistle until it's completely gone because these yellow flowers, they turn into these puffballs. See the white puffballs? And there's seeds in there. And that's what the goldfinches feed on. And they need that. That's really a seed that's important to them. So I leave that, but there is another apple tree in there. That's another one I just stuck in the ground. I've got more on my deck. They come, I, I open up an apple sometimes and there are seeds that look like they're going to grow and I drop them in the soil and then they come up and then I don't want to kill them. So it's, it's crazy. But I just been planting them around and then Gary came up with the idea. He said, you have so, I'm going to sit for a minute. You have so many apple trees. Okay, I just saw a fruit beetle fly by. It's my cue to go hide in the house. I can't stand those things. It gets stuck in my hair. Um, he said he might dot the hillside with them. It won't matter what the apples taste like. He can always graft on them if they made it later. And then the deer, if they really want it, they can eat. So we'll see. I don't know. There's so many of them. Avocado tree came up in the wood chips. And that thing got topped by a deer. But it grew a bushy top. So we'll see what happens with that. And then this is the nectarine. We've got a big tree in the yard. And they, the second year they grow, they're loaded with fruit. They're not grafted and they grow a lot of fruit. So this is really interesting. So he brought me this. It was a smaller tree and that looks bushed out really nice. It had one flower, didn't make it yet, but next year I should have nectarines on it if it makes it. So we'll see. With the hawks that are flying around my head, you saw the nest last time. The babies have left the nest and 
I've got such great videos. I'm debating if I really want to put them up. I've got videos that I have... I took videos that I've never seen on a nature show. I'm not saying they're not out there, but just amazing video from the hawks. And I'm debating. I'll see if I want to put something up. I'd have to put a disclaimer because, as you know, they're not vegetarians. But mom has brought a full-size rabbit and has passed it around to their full her, their full-size babies. Look at that. That's the baby. And she, the baby sees me. Go away. Do not land on me. They, she'll bring it and they'll pass it around. I've never seen this before. In front of me, I'll be sitting here and they'll pass the rabbit from one to the other. It's, it's sad. It's nature. Gary's it's nature. I know, but it doesn't mean it doesn't bother me. But they're so tame. When they see me out here, they come and they follow me around. Oh, there's the other baby. And there's still four. Definitely four. Saw them yesterday. Look at that. Let's see if I can zoom in for a minute. Okay, I don't want them landing on me, but they do make me nervous because I work out here and they literally will come down to the truck bed if I'm watering and sit on the truck bed watching me. They're that tame because they've watched me since the day they were hatched, basically, or once they could look over the edge of the nest. They were watching me and they got used to me as, well, she's part of the environment. That's all she is. She just, she belongs here. So they do make me nervous and I have to keep an eye on Kitty because Kitty is as big as a rabbit, if not smaller. So that makes me nervous. And the other thing I was going to tell you is I come out in the morning and I sit here with the deer and they do their ponging or something, the buck. And I just sit here and I watch them and they roam all around me. And that's what I don't know. My friend told me you're gonna get yourself killed doing that. So I don't know if that's true. I know people that have raised deer years ago and I know you, it's not rutting season right now. They're, they're breaking off into groups. This particular group was four bucks and one doe, but there was one that was older. So I don't know if the younger ones were his siblings or how that was, or if they just got together, but they've been hanging out here. They've been eating all the different trees and then that's where their water hole is and that's fine as long as they don't bother me i figured if something happened and they came after me i've got the cars behind me and i will slide myself as fast as i can under one of the cars or into a car if possible but we'll see what happens so with that i hope you enjoyed this garden tour with a touch of nature and i'm going to go get another cup of coffee since it's early and then i'm going to get my day started and hopefully these hawks will leave my dogs alone and me and do their own thing and move on soon. They can't all live here. So with that, have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.